Hello, my cross stitch friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May, and I am the lead designer and artist behind the brand Artith Design. I'm so happy that you came to spend some time with me this week. I have been on a little floss tube hiatus for the last month, and I'm just so excited to be back and show you all of my finishes, my fully finished stuff, couple of my new releases, my new counted cross stitch starts because I love stitching other people's work, not just my own. <laughs> and yeah, just talk all things counted cross stitch. So if you're new, welcome. And if you're coming back to join me, awesome. Welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I had to put my two pugs away because I'm filming in my library and they love to bark out the windows. So... <laughs> I'm sorry the pugs cannot make an appearance today. Hopefully the next time I film in another location, they can say hi. <laughs> so let's get started talking cross stitch. Yay! Okay, first off, I wanna thank everyone who came to the live webinar that I hosted with Sulky of America. They are a thread company. The threads are from Italy, but Sulky, Gungold, it's in Europe, you know, UK and Europe and here in the United States. So it was really cool to do some, uh, the patriotic cross stitch with Sulky of America. So I had that webinar and I have all the links and stuff down there. So that was last month. And then a couple days ago, X Stitch Magazine, which is run by Jamie Chambers, the Mr. X Stitch. It is based out of the UK. It's a digital only cross stitch magazine. And one of my new designs is in that. And that's called Gleesome Threesome. <sighs> Say that three times fast. And so I had a couple of those releases. And then I have some new new releases that I did. I participated in the online needlework emporium. It's really cool. So the, the ladies that started that, they are here in the Mid-Atlantic, um, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland area here. And they focus more on antique needlework tools, handmade items with like needlework themes. So I am their, one of their new cross stitch, you know, vendor booth people. So it was neat to see and learn and, digest <laughs> some of the really awesome stuff that they have and what they make and I just love needlework <laughs> so with the needlework emporium the virtual show I released two things and I sewed a bunch of project bags and so here let me show you what I did so the first thing I made and released this Maryland blue crab and I have it called a Chesapeake Bay Treasures number one. Well, if there's a number one, then there's might be a two, three, four, five. <laughs> so here's the first one. It is on a hand dyed 18 count Ada fabric that I dyed myself. And then it's stitched with one strand of blue variegated silk embroidery floss. And so I made a limited edition kit. So I made just, what I made is what I made. What the uh, hand dyed fabric, the, the silk, uh, it came with the backing fabric, it came with this piece here, the little pearl pin, everything. So I released that on in my Gumroad shop and that was really cool. And then just the pattern will be released pretty soon. Uh, once the kits sell out, I'm gonna release just the pattern. Um, on my website, but I'm so excited to say that Anne at Dying to Stitch, that is a brick and, brick and mortar needlework shop down in Virginia Beach, Virginia. It is actually the first needlework shop I've ever went to. <laughs> and so it's really cool. So Anne is going to be carrying the little Maryland blue crabs. Yay! <laughs> So I'm really excited and I'm excited for 
more in the series. I'm not sure though if I'm going to be releasing them just as patterns or if I'm going to do any more limited edition kits like this where I hand dye the Ada and all the stuff because wow that was an adventure let me tell you. <laughs> so here we go Marilyn Blue Crab was my first new release and my second new release is oh, so exciting. This is number four in the series and it is called Count the Pins and it is on a 32 count Wexford linen titled Midas Touch from Silk Weaver Fabrics and it's stitched with two strands of Bing Cherry red variegated cotton floss by color in cotton oh my gosh i love it and yeah it, i'm so excited so i premiered this last week and you can get the paper printed chart and the eight yard uh eight meter length of uh the the red embroidery floss which of course i forgot to grab to show you so this is third in the uh, this is fourth in the series third in the series is my count the creamers and I released that in conjunction with the moo the merrier uh, back in February that was with my moo the merrier design and it was that was charted with the sulky from the sulky thread pack for the moo the merrier that red so all four of my samplers have been stitched with with different reds but say if you want to get this one with the color and cotton and then you want to do all of them in that one color, that would be awesome. So I, this is, this is the first in the series and all of these are stitched on the Midas Touch 32 count Wexford linen by Silk Weaver. So the one thing that, or okay, two things, <laughs> three things, three things that remain the same throughout the series is the fabric. I've stitched on the same fabric. Um, they're all counted cross stitch. They all finish in a standard five by seven frame. No, I'm lying because count the creamers is a different count. Okay. So scratch all of that. <laughs> they're, they're all red samplers. They're all part of my petite red sampler series. There is count the cups. There is, let me see if I can grab it. This is from Kelly Stadola. She love to stitch. I love it so much. I put that up. I love it so much. Okay. Uh, this one here is count the saucers. So count the cups, count the saucers. So they are, they're on the same fabric. The, the three that I'm showing you here are all stitched with two strands of red embroidery floss but the Count the Creamers is with one strand because it was with Sulky. So that's where I just got myself all jammed up. So they're different reds, but again, if you got all of the, if you got the sear, you could stitch them all in your favorite red. Does that make sense? But I wanted for each sampler to showcase all the different reds that there are because, you know, people like orange reds and blue reds and so many reds. <laughs> So yeah, I'm really excited. So this is Count the Cups. I know a lot of people have been like, Amanda May, where's number six? So number six is actually right here. I think what I should have done in retrospect was see how it's coming out of this coffee carafe right here. I should have not stitched like two stitches so there'd be a separation between the carafe and the number six, but that is a number six right there. I promise. <laughs> So there's count the cups and then count the saucers. There is a lot of back stitching and stuff for the, the saucer stuff. So there's the flying saucers. There's the, the, the saucers that you put your cup on, like the teacup saucers. And I put a flying saucer here with wings. So there's, I tried to do that all that there. And so the number is one through nine. And then here for count the pins okay gotta put it ah! this there are rolling pins like for baking there are bowling pins because 
bowling, hello, I love to bowl. My ball loves to go right in the gutter, but boy, do I sure love to try. <laughs> uh, there's, so rolling pins, bowling pins, pin cushion, so pins, straight pins. Down the side here are little pins, bobby pin. So there's a safety pin here, bobby pin, like for your hair, the bobby pins the little tiny pin tacks like sequin pins. Then here, you've got the like the bulletin board pins. Here, there's a hat and there's hat pins on the hat. And then here, this is uh, all backstitch and it says pin, P-I-N with an arrow up. So I even included a pin up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, pin up right here. And then here's another little pin. So, and then there's the number one and then the numbers two through nine here. And that, that's count the pins. <laughs> and because I couldn't help myself, I made some bags with my thing. So I got custom printed. I got these custom printed on cotton fabric. And let me see, can I put, let me see if I can get all this stuff put back. I got these printed on fabric and then I made them into custom bags. And my son who turned four last week, well, he loves to sew and he loves to help. And so I have like four bags that he helped with that are so gnarly that I have to <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell these are handmade, but I made I made bags and it was so fun. So I had the custom panels. So I'm debating if I want to continue to make some bags or maybe just offer all the supplies like as a kit and then you buy the kit and make your own bag. I don't know yet. So uh but oh my goodness. So it opens and then I prototyped this one with the, on the inside and the outside there. So ah, anyway, made some project bags. So those were my two new releases plus project bags. But wait, I finished more stuff. So for my, for a present, I had, I fully finished this, which I'm so excited about. This is by Ink Circles, who is Tracy Horner. I gotta find her pattern. Where did I put it? Everything's kind of out of order here that I wanna show you. This is her pattern, Ink Circles, and it's called Badgers from the Dawn of Memes. This was a, and still continues to be, a very popular YouTube video, and it goes like, Badger, 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 mushroom, mushroom, badger, badger, badger. And then it goes, snake, snake. Anyway, it was one of the first YouTube videos we watched together as a couple, like, how, what, 11, 12 years ago? Anyway, and so I had to commemorate such a joyous memory in cross stitch. So this is the first ever, like, official gifted cross stitch I did. I got the frame at a thrift store and then I painted it with the art deco and it was like a red enamel acrylic so I did a couple coats of that it's stitched on a piece of Lugana and I want to say it's a 32 count and it's fitting in this five inch frame and then I use the purple is silks for you and then the yeah purple is silks for you and then everything else is like just cottons dmc and stuff so i am so excited about this i did two strands over two on a i believe it's a 32 count the fabric was gifted to me from one of my friends karen yay thank you karen so i got that finished so that was and I gave it as the present and he loved it. And he's like, that's the first cross stitch you ever made me. 
<laughs> you know, and I was all secretive about it too. Like I was stitching like and not. <laughs> anyway, do you want to see some more finishes? It's been a while. Oh my goodness. Okay. I finished one part of a two part <laughs> pattern. I am a big fan of Lindy stitches and I decided to stitch the apart, but in my heart, this is the ex ghoul friends stitch that she had. I won her ex ghoul friends contest by painting my face green and showing up my triple chins on Instagram. My glorious chins, mind you. All bodies are good bodies. Anyway, I won and I started stitching the hand. So I did that one. I am debating about doing the face just as the face, not no writing. That beautiful, beautiful face and putting it in a round or one of those oval like ornate frames for Halloween. I was thinking about stitching her like on a black and then putting her in an oval frame. I don't know. I haven't gotten there yet. I'm happy that I have a finish. So let me show you my finish. It is a part, but in my heart. Yay! This is stitched on a remnant piece of one of my R&R &R reproductions fabrics. I don't know the shade, the color, but I, um, I think it's from one of the, all the different projects I have made. I, anyway, I love it. And I used Valdani and it's the, I think it's number eight cotton. I'll show you the ball. I used a Valdani ball. I got this Valdani at Primitive Homespun Wool and Needleworks. Uh, Kathy is the proprietor over in Frederick, Maryland, downtown Frederick. Oh my gosh, her shop is amazing. Anyway, so I did it with the Valdani here and uh, P as in Peter and then the number two. And she uses this for punch needle and I thought, wouldn't it look really pretty as a zombie hand? So I used one strand of the Valdani for the zombie hand and I love it. And then the rest is a hodgepodge of Victorian motto sampler thread. Um, like I have Arizona sunset as part of the glove. And then the rest is old tattered lag. She has a shop and she's the um, patent holder of ultra punch needle and she does rug hook anyway. Yeah, big deal. And so I got, I have her like starter pack set of like, so it's like dirty, dirty red pumpkin, dirty white. Anyway, I use just a hodgepodge of those colors in here and I'm really happy with the results. This was like antique black, which is like that charcoal gray look. And then the brown around here and the flowers, I think is the red, the, um, the, the dirty red. So yay, I've got to finish this. And I have the called for, it's called Grubby Wog by Lady Dot Creates. I used that same color in my Happy Holidays gift bag that was in um, just Cross Stitch Magazine last in December. Um, yes, I used a grubby wog on that and then I'll use it on this. So that's that trim, it's really pretty. So I had that. So those two finishes, Ink Circles and Lindy Stitches. And I have one more like finish, I really want to make sure I show you. Oh, two more, two more. I got to really, I want to make sure I show you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I finished tending the garden and this is the cross stitch in this. It's a quilt book, but this is the, the stitch. I omitted the year and the name down below. I stitched everything else, but the personalization of the date and the name, I did not stitch. This book, like I said, it's it's mostly quilting, but it has the that has that cross stitch sampler in there. 
I have a link to the Blackbird stuff down in my description. Just scroll down and there's a idea list and it has all of the Blackbird stuff. Amazing. Anyway, so tending the garden and oh, I'm so excited to show you this. I stitched this on uh, Baby Bunny, Little Bunny, Little Bunny, 36 count by X Jude Designs. And then the, the fabric left over, I made sure when I cut it and then I, I sewed down the edges so they're all ready for me to use for another project. I did kind of a hodgepodge coloring, mostly X Jude Designs, her, fab, her colors from her Halloween box. And then uh, some limited edition gentle art threads that like don't have names. So like that purple, it was on the house and it's the limited edition purple. It was part of the floss pack from Kitten Stitcher she had on her website. Okay, enough talking, show the finish. All right, here it is. Dun, da, da, da. I'm so happy. Okay, so I stitched this again on 36 count linen and I stitched with one strand of the cotton embroidery floss over two linen threads. I did use the garden gate or the black, the, I used the called for black for the roof and the birds, but everything else was, oh no, and I used the green for the thyme, the dried thyme, but everything else was, um, I did a color conversion for. I had so much fun doing those butterflies. I think the butterflies are my favorite part and I love the way that the flowers and stuff look. I took y'all's advice. I had made a mistake where something's over like by three and it, but I didn't fix it. I just left it as is since I wasn't putting the date in and I felt it made the, the greenery look more organic. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I am concerned about getting the proper framing for this. It, I was concerned by not having the name below. I charted out a name. So my last name is McNaughton and that's a lot. <laughs> and I, I was like, I don't want to do that. So anyway, I just left it with no name. But when I cut out my fabric, I left a um, three inch margin all the way around for framing. And then I pressed it just so I could show all of you that even though I stitch in hand, I, I did, I pressed for this occasion. <laughs> so I'm so excited. That's the, from the Blackbird Designs uh, Tending the Garden. So those are all but one of my finishes. Yeah, but wait, there's more. Okay, I'm really excited to show you that I finished. Where'd I put it? I just had it. Here it is. I stitched black, uh, Barbara Anna Designs. This is her rooster ride. She has so many cute little things that are riding different animals. I think there's like a Santa riding a bunny I want to stitch and oh, all the cute things. So I, this is, you can get this, it's digital download on Creative Poppy. There are several designers that, uh, worldwide, including US-based designers that have their stuff on Creative Poppy. Creative Poppy is based over in Europe, but you don't have to be from Europe to be part of, anyway, I digress. So here we go. I use pretty much all the called for colors. I made my own little thread drops with scrapbook paper. It's all DMC. No, that's not true. Okay, so I used Gentle Art Onyx. This is the green there that's so gorgeous. That is that from the X Jude. It's Friday the 13th. And then I did use this mint, mint swirl by Victorian Motto. So again, hodgepodge. I love it. I made, I used these little lanyard things. These have been so much fun. So I put like my fabric tag, the toasted almond. This fabric is the gift that keeps on giving. So I have literally stitched 
So up there I have Barbara Anna the Fox back there, the light. That's on the toasted almond. My carriage garden sampling dream bird is on it. And now I have another bird on it. And I think I have one piece left. Like I'm literally using every single <laughs> piece of fabric. So here is my finish. Yay! I decided not to stitch the date 1803 right here. And instead I added just another one of her star motifs and I, I think it looks really nice. I love that mint swirl. I think it's a really, it's, it's, a, it's a lot brighter than the color palette called for, but I thought it was so fun and vibrant and bright. And that Friday the 13th green for the trees, I just love it. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's so cute. And I have made a rule for myself that I, I have to always have like some sort of Barbara Anna on rotation. So with that, I started another Barbara Anna. I did, because I do what I want. So I started this one May 1st, and I finished it May 22nd. I finished this the day after I got my second vaccine shot because I got sick. That's another reason why I didn't do a video was I got sick and then my kids got sick. It was just like a whole big mess. <sighs> All right, let me show you my 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 new start for because I again I can't go I have to always be doing a Barbara Anna this is funky bird diddy pouch I first saw this completed by Teresa kitten stitcher on one of her floss tube videos like two or three years ago that was the first time I was introduced to Barbara Anna so I'm excited to officially be starting this I went ahead and ordered from an online needlework store all of the called for colors. I did no substitutions, all the called for colors, and I'm doing it on the 32 count cream Lugana fabric. I got a big piece of fabric. It doesn't, you don't need to have it that big, uh, but it was what was in stock and yes. So I am stitching this with two, two DMC threads over two on this Lugana. And I started up in the center top, which is like right here. So I'm gonna make sure I get the sampler alphabet and then it goes down and then the bird will be the end. At first I thought I'd start from the bottom and work my way up, like do the bird and then finish with the alphabet. But I know me, if I stitched the bird first, when it came to the alphabet, I'd be like, nah, I'm just gonna do the bird. So I decided I made sure I started here in the top middle and I'm gonna work my way down. And again, I'm using all the called for threads. And I'm excited. So I started this one last night. Uh, and yeah, and then I have another one. I've gotta, I've gotta get the... Um, the threads for, I think I have most of her, her, uh, Barbara Anna has a very similar like color palette. So I think I'm gonna, I've got to check my other projects that I did of hers and see if I can just pull the threads. I, I hope I don't have to order any more threads <laughs> in order to use it. So I have so much more to show you, but that just means that I have enough material to come back and talk to y'all next week. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So I, I showed you my finishes. I've got so many works in progress and I have new starts, but I think we're going to leave on this high note, Barbara, Anna, and all the good things, right? So yes, I am so happy that you joined me this week, talked with me about Counted Cross Stitch. Let me know if there is anything you're interested in seeing from me um, as far as physical products that I have in my shop. I'm gonna start transitioning from just PDF patterns over to paper patterns, but that transition does require like reformatting, printing, all the things, right? So I am gonna start transitioning to having printed patterns as well as PDF. I am gonna have some stuff like actually stocked in my shop, my Gumroad shop. So Gumroad is the secure 
payment platform that I use. I don't have, I have my own website, but the payment platform is Gumroad, if, if that makes sense. So um, I've got, I've got some more of the kits left. Let me know if, if you'd be interested in a second kit for the Chesapeake Bay Treasure series. And I wonder what I it would be to stitch. So anyway, uh, I, I just appreciate you all so much. Thank you for the love, the support and for stitching all the things and for tagging me on social media and showing me your progress with your stitches. And it's just, it's so humbling and I'm so honored and I love you. So in case you forgot, cause it's been a while, you matter, your stitching matters and I will see you soon. Mwah! Happy stitching. <laughs>